Revelations 12 and 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So this particular word that is used here in the scripture, accuser, is actually the Greek word categoris. And categoris is, it basically means breaking things up into certain categories. And this is what we have now with the BLM movement. And we're watching how this racial divide is happening, this race war. I talked about all of this in my video, uh, Color of Blood, uh, Truth Behind Hip Hop Part 11. If you haven't seen that, you definitely need need to get that video. But in that video, I discussed this. People are being broken up into categories uh, by our society, and it is leading to a racial war. It's leading to a people group war, animosity between certain people groups and different things. Y'all, this is all the devil. This is the devil's job. The devil is seeking to turn mankind on itself, turn mankind against itself, and he does this by accusing uh, he is the accuser. The Bible says he does it day and night and he accuses us and breaks us up into these categories. These three categories of accusations that he brings and uh, they're sin, uh, race and class. And those are the things I'm going to talk about today, just how the devil breaks us up into these three uh, specific categories against each other so that we will uh, fight against one another instead of loving one another like uh, the Bible tells us to do as believers. So the first category that the devil works in is the category of sin. The devil makes us categorize people by sin and which sin is worse than others. And I know you've seen that, you know, the guy that lies or the guy that uh, uh envies or has pride or whatever is, you know, his sins are just kind of uh, glossed over. But the one that commits murder or commits adultery or whatever, they're they're just total uh, rejects uh, because what they did is actually in the eyes of men worse than others. And let me tell you something about that. You know, it's not that sins are actually worse than others as far as God's concerned, because we know God treats all sin the same. All sin uh, is worthy of death and requires the redemption of Jesus Christ. But we as people, we see certain sins worse because of what we've been through. So if we've experienced it, if we've experienced trauma at the hands of that sin, uh, if those sins affected us in any way in our development or whatever, you know, we uh, hate or whatever came in our hearts or being offended by something. And so when that sin is brought up, it, it, it's more grave to us because of what we've been through, um, you know, in our, in our lives. So that's where that comes from. But uh, we know that all sin deserves death and must be washed away by the blood of Jesus. It's the devil that makes us feel our sin is beyond the redemption of God and we are not worthy. This is the accuser at work again. He does this because his own sin is unredeemable and he wants us to suffer with him. So that's the devil's job. He knows he can't be forgiven his sins. And people ask me all the time, well, why can't the devil be forgiven? Why can't he repent? Man, you know people in your life that won't repent, okay? So don't try to act like the devil is somewhere trying to get it right when you know people that don't ever want to get it right. Well, the devil is 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 the worst of all. He doesn't want to get it right. That's not what he wants. He's beyond that. He's past that. He's reprobate in, concerning the faith. Uh, and so that's not what he wants. But uh, he wants... Uh, us to feel that our sins are unredeemable so that we will suffer with him and we will be like him. And, you know, this is the, this is why he wreaks so much havoc upon us. A person that accuses others of their past sins is doing it because they themselves are in sin. The sin of pride, envy, and malice are listed in the Bible, which is Galatians 5 and 20, along with other works of the flesh. So a person that is an accuser, a person that is going around accusing someone, trying to hold them accountable of their past or or, or, or making what they did worse than what they do, it's it, this person is in sin themselves and their own pride, arrogance, uh, envy and malice are all sins and they're sinning. Do you know you have to, you have to sin to be an accuser of sins of other people. So to even take a position to accuse another of being, uh, unredeemable 
is the fruit of Satan, the accuser. So when a person tries to act like there is no redemption or there's no coming back for another person, they're really making their own way harder and they're taking the position of the accuser of the brethren, which is the devil. John 8 and 10 says, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And when he uses this word, it's the same word, accusers. He's saying, where are the men that put you in the unforgivable category? They brought you out here because you were caught in adultery. They didn't bring the man. They brought the woman, which is all, which is another message within itself. Then they picked up stones and was prepared to stone this woman. And Jesus said, hey, so who's worthy of stoning her? Him without any sin cast the first stone and they all just dropped their stones and left. But they were putting this woman in a category showing that her sins or trying to show her sin was worse than the sins that they had committed. But Jesus came and leveled the playing field and said, hey, you all got sin. So cast the first stone if you don't have any. And this broke the crowd up. And this is why he asked, where are the ones that were putting you in this category or categorizing your sin as worse than theirs? He says, where did they go? And uh, there's another uh, story about this that uh, I find very interesting, and it is about uh, King David in the Bible and in, 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 in uh, Kings. It tells us that Shemia threw stones at David. This is actually Samuel. Shemia threw uh, stones at David and judged him for his past. So David's walking along with his men, and all of a sudden a man sees him, calls him a devil, says, you son of Belial, you murderous, you know, just bringing up David's past or what had happened with Uriah the Hittite, and basically is accusing David. Even though David had gotten repentant and God had restored him, or David repented of his sins and God restored him, yet Shemiah felt David should still suffer for his past. So he's still bringing up his past. He's throwing stones. He's cursing at him, the Bible says, and all of this disrespect to the king, even though the king had already gotten it right. David did not defend himself though. And this is this shows the true heart for God that David had. He didn't defend himself. And you never have to defend yourself when you know you're forgiven. When you know God has forgiven you, you don't have to defend yourself of your past. The Bible says as far as the east is to the west, God has forgiven us and thrown our sins away, never to remember them again. They're in the sea of forgetfulness. So if someone, if the devil, anyone, Shamia, or whoever's in your life is bringing up past sins, you know that you're forgiven of them. You never have to say a word because Swift judgment is going to come upon that person that is bringing up your past. David did not defend himself. He just kept on his way, knowing that God had forgiven him and will avenge him as well. So 2 Samuel 16 and 13 says, And as David and his men went by the way, Shemia went along on the hillside over against him and cursed as he went, threw stones at him and cast dust. So when Shemiah eventually sinned later on, after David had passed, Shemiah eventually sinned by disobeying David's son, Solomon's orders. Um, he And then he was killed. He could not seek mercy because he was a judger of another man's past. So his past caught up with him because he didn't show David mercy, because he wanted David punished for his sin. Then when he sinned against King Solomon, the Bible tells us that Solomon killed him. This is the accuser at work. The devil wants you to accuse others so you will have no mercy and grace for yourselves in the time of need. First Kings 2 and 44. The king said moreover to Shemia, thou knowest all the wickedness which thine heart is privy to, that thou didst to my to David, my father. Therefore, the Lord shall return thy wickedness upon thy own head. So if you want mercy, you have to give mercy. So this is telling us that the devil will categorize sins, try to make your sin worse, try to make your sin unredeemable, try to make what you did so bad that you can't have God's blessings. And we know that is the devil using or accusing in a category. The next category, which is uh, you know, what we were talking about, the BLM and the Black Lives Matter and all the different things you're seeing in the news and in the media about this. This is the category of race. And the devil breaks us up in, in the category of race to cause us to hate, persecute and enslave one another. So the accuser puts us in categories of race and creed. He accuses one people group to be better or think they're better than another and judge uh, each other. 
And this is exactly what the devil is doing. This race war we are seeing develop is of Satan. In order for one race to demonize another, they must take the position of being perfect or sin free. So you have to take the position of being better than another race in order to judge another race. You cannot judge the past or present sins of a people group without your own sins being judged. So this is the danger of this. Matthew 5 and 7 says, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. If you want mercy, you have to be merciful. So we can't look at people groups. And the crazy thing is we're all mixed with all kinds of groups. I mean, look at me. I got freckles and light skin. I mean, we all got all kinds of stuff in us. So for us to take the standpoint of our color is better, or we think we're better, or we think another people group owes us something because they persecuted our ancestors and this and this, you don't know history because all people groups are guilty of enslavement. So you just don't know history. We're not looking to be paid back for something that happened a thousand years ago or 400 years ago of whatever it was. You better live your life and get a job and concentrate on what you're doing and watch your kids right now. But, you know, we are all with sin and we all fall short and our sins are no lesser or greater then others and the history proves that we all have slavery, war, and unlawful murder in all of our people groups past. History proves that. Therefore, none of us are worthy to deem another race, creed, or people group as evil. Romans 2 and 1 says, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doeth the same things. We're all guilty of the same things. If you trace, trace our lineage, if you trace our history, if you trace where we came from, you're going to find the same sins in every people group. And it's in all of our blood. That's why we need the blood of the lamb. That's why we need the blood of Christ to run through our veins and redeem us from sin because all of our sin, I mean, all of our blood is guilty of sin. The devil loves to group us up and cause divisions because these divisions lead to pride and the covering up of our own sins. And that's what you see. So for the BLM movement to even have some success, they got to cover up the black on black crime that's happening in Chicago every weekend. Dozens are getting shot down and gunned down of the same color. They have to cover that up. They have to cover up all of those things in order to have a successful movement. And that's what happens because if we're going to be lifted up as people, our sins are going to find us. And when your sins find you, you're just as guilty as anyone else. And this is what the devil loves, though. He loves to make us be lifted up because the Bible says pride coming before the fall and a hearty heart before destruction. The devil loves to group us up and cause divisions because these divisions lead to pride and the covering up of our own sins. We then are justified by our own ideas instead of the blood of Jesus. This is the accuser of the brethren at work. And so the final class that the devil likes to uh, cause us to put each other in or accuse us of being in and using um, uh, his powers as the accuser is the categories of class. And this is Man, this is big with the internet because the internet, Instagram, it makes people covet each other's lives, want to be in the class with other people, want to, you know, be all that they can be on the internet. You know, I tell people all the time, when you're watching the internet, you're watching everyone's highlight reel, okay? You're not watching the lows. You're not watching the fights. You're not watching the discontentment. You're not watching the hurt. You're not watching all the things that happen when they're not in front of all of their followers or all of their viewers or their viewership. You see in the highlight reel, they're putting the best on there to make you covet, to make you want their life, to make you lust after their life and deem your own life as trash. And then you begin to deem your husband as trash because he can't get you that. You begin to deem your wife as trash because she don't look like some of these other women. All these things happen because the devil wants us lumped into classes and statuses. This is his job as the accuser. The accuser loves to use covetousness to make us feel we are entitled to what others have. Raising up this contentment in women will always cause weak men to be stirred up. This happened in the garden. The devil knew to go to the woman first 
and raise up discontentment in her so she would get her husband to eat. That's Bible. First Kings 21 even tells us, but there was none like Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom his wife Jezebel did what? Stir it up. Why? Because he was a weak and sullen man, the Bible tells us. And so his wife manipulated him to get the things that she wanted. And this is the sad part. In the church, the enemy makes people... Um, makes people feel that they should have more or are entitled to what others have without them truly working hard for it. They want the crown without the cross. They want to be lifted up without lifting up Jesus. Matthew 16 and 24 says, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So God is looking for self-denial, but the internet is promoting self. And people are wanting things. They're wanting what they see. They're wanting what others have. And they don't understand. A lot of times people have things because they worked hard. A lot of times, and this is, man, this is going to sound weird to some people, but a lot of times people are blessed just because they have fully surrendered to God and God is blessing them. And, you know, they people covet them and people want what they have and fight over it and all of this kind of stuff. And they don't understand. You haven't yielded your heart. And that doesn't mean that we equate uh, uh, having things with God or anything like that, anything like that. But you have to be content in the things that you have, the call for your life, where you should be. You have to pray for that. That's not going to come naturally. You have to pray and believe God for that kind of contentment. But when they see others blessed, they desire it without truly desiring the source of it. This causes them to covet and be discontented. They begin to equate finances and fame with God's hand. This is the devil at work. Again, he's causing categories or causing us to categorize ourselves or causing us to view ourselves as better or view ourselves as something. And this in the church, y'all, this is what's messing the church up. This is why a lot of churches need to stay closed because people have gotten up and people have equated uh, uh, having things with having God. And that is not the truth. Second Peter two and three says, and through covetousness, they shall with feign words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. So they are basically with their words making uh, just, just basically making you merchandise. You see them doing it online. They will do anything for views and likes. They'll say anything, do anything just to get paid from these likes and views online. And they do this in the church as well, just to have a lot of members. They'll teach things that are not true. They allow the devil to work through them to judge people by their finances, fame, and even online statuses. People are then celebrated and lifted up superficially and the true servants of God are cast down by popular opinion. So this is what is happening. The devil is putting people in status categories in their own minds where they feel they need to have. They feel they're entitled to have. First Timothy 6 and 5 says, perverts disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such do what? Withdraw thyself. So these are the three categories that the devil is using and this word accuser actually means categories, which means categories. The devil seeks to put us in these categories. He is the accuser and that's his job, but he has to do this through people. Understand this. So he looks for people that do that feel their failures. They have nothing to lose or they tried Christ and he didn't give them what they desired. This is the great falling away that we're seeing now. The devil will use these people to torment and persecute the true believers because they themselves are miserable. These will categorize the sins of people, people groups and race hate groups and cause people to covet the lives of others. This is all the devil's doing so he can cause many to fall away and miss Jesus. So the devil, the Bible says he accuses day and night and he does it through by putting people in categories. We have to make sure y'all that as believers in Christ and as true followers of Christ, that we don't categorize people. We have to pray against this. We cannot categorize people's sins. We cannot make make people unredeemable. We cannot make, you know, uh, uh, take mercy away from people because we're going to need that same mercy. 
And then we can't discriminate with with, with races and trying to make certain races guilty of something that we're not guilty of. We're all guilty of sin. We've all sinned and fallen short. And racism is not worse than malice. They're the same. It's not worse than adultery. They're the same. So these sins are all the same. So all the sins that we've committed as people, we cannot hold a people group uh, in contempt. And we know that we have sinned ourselves. And then finally, the category of class, y'all, we got to drop this whole watching Instagram and wishing I had this and wishing I had that and, and all of this. Because haven't you noticed that the more you wish for things, the more you long for things, the less you long for God, the less you long for his power to work in your life, the less you long for his appearance you know, you stop longing for the appearance of Christ and the coming of Christ because you want to accomplish certain things. You want to have certain things to prove to yourself or to prove to others that you are of a certain class. That is the devil. That's the devil accusing you. That's the devil that you hear that's saying you're a failure. You know, I haven't uh, I get more uh, correspondence concerning suicidal thoughts and depression than I ever have. People are constantly telling me I keep seeing myself grabbing a knife, grabbing a gun, ending my life, all of these things. Don't you know that that's discontentment? Don't you know that that's the accuser accusing you, accusing you of not accomplishing certain things or not living up to a certain class? He's accusing you of your sins, saying that you, <laughs> you're you unredeemable. He's got you believing this black lies foolishness and then he's got you putting yourself in a low class, believing that you are entitled to more. All of these things will cause those thoughts of depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts of killing yourself. These are from the devil. So we must understand that the accuser of the brethren is accusing us day and night, putting these thoughts in our head. And we must use the power of God. We must pray through the Holy Ghost against these attacks. These are end time attacks. They're more severe than they've ever been. But we know that in the end times, we have an end time savior and the end time savior, the power in his blood is more powerful now than it's ever been. He is our savior. He's our redeemer and he's coming back for us. And when he comes back, we know the accuser of the brethren will finally be cast down.